Good morning. My name is Ellen Thomas and I'm an artist and um, have been invited to jury a show that had about uh, 225 entries and I had to pare them down to the awards category and limiting a show of this size is challenging and I wanted to share with you what a jurist goes through when he or she is making selections for awards. Now, not all of the paintings that I'm going to show you and not all of the artwork and sculptures that I'm going to show you actually win awards. But in the way I do a show is I tend to go through the entire show and eliminate the ones that would not be eligible for awards and then select that smaller group of paintings for further analysis. So these two videos, this first one on painting and the second one on the other category called alternative for this show, I'm going to run through my mental thinking as I looked at these artworks and then selected them to be set aside for final jurying for awards. Now the awards will be given out by the art association affiliated with this talk and not by me because I won't be present due to COVID and all the other issues that we're currently facing. So doing Zoom and doing a meeting like this for all of the people interested in seeing how a juror, juror selects art, hopefully will be entertaining <laughs> as well as be, have you understand just what goes through the mind of this juror in particular and perhaps many jurors as we look at artwork. Now, my background is in teaching and also my background is in art that has a foundation in good design. The elements and principles of design are uh, definitely an aspect. And in the comments below, I will list all of those 14 points that I use as a criteria for making the selections. And I will talk about them as I do. Now, this is part one, which will be up on YouTube. And you can see part two, which will probably follow it immediately and be uploaded too. So here we go. Share screen. When I select a painting for a show, my first, my mind runs through design first. Is it well designed? Does it use the elements and principles of design? Once those criteria are met and I see that the individual is handling the medium properly, I end up making a selection narrowing down the, the, the ones that have good design to whether or not they tell a story. And this one obviously meets the criteria on both counts. The design is one of um, contemporary issues that, and the artist addresses these contemporary issues with lovely statements of pattern, texture, and taking an icon of American art and modifying it and completely changing it, yet re it's still recognizable, uh, was just the icing on the cake. So this one definitely made the cut. I selected this one because of the beautiful uses of color on a subject that is usually quite sappy sweet. And yet this one seems to have a power like Watership Down uh, for me in being able to depict a rabbit with such um, underlying, I don't know, uh, challenges, the blood red under the jawline and the orange and green almost complementary colors coming together. This is an excellent use of color. So this one made the cut. Usually portraiture is of a child or a person looking up at you or a baby where the photographer shoots right up the nose. And so when I see a portrait of a child that's both introspective and mature bond beyond their years, I found this one to be one that would definitely make the cut. There were other portraits in the show that were extremely well done. But when we look at source material for creating the portraits of children especially, what I like to see is a, a lovely use of color. There's nothing overpowering about the color in this. Extraordinarily well drawn and also well painted. Now, here's where I talk about the subjectiveness of a juror. I'm a motorcyclist and as such, I bring that to the table. I can't, it's part of my life right now. So it's something that I enjoy doing. And icons of motorcycling trips will always catch my eye as this one did. Now, this one also has a secondary thing about it that is, um, in that it is a um, off-center asymmetrical design, which caught my eye. Again, the use of color caught my eye. Um, the pattern of light and dark caught my eye. These are the things that matter to uh, 
artists in general and, and jurors especially. If anything is too symmetrical, it better have a powerful statement contained in it as a story elsewise. It just is not going to catch the eye of the juror. So those of you who end up painting a path through the woods that goes right down the middle of your canvas with trees on each side, I'm talking about you. So set it off center and watch how the interest in the work grows. This is an abstraction of a human face. It's, it's, uh, it's taken an idea that, with which we're always familiar and has taken it to a new level. The areas of uh, mass in color that still have some pattern and texture in them and the calligraphy use of line is just a delight for the eye. Now the human biology makes us want to see faces and everything. And so of course this immediately became a face to me. And, I can, and that's the beauty of abstract art. It can always have a message for us. It made the cut also because of its lovely use of color with the more saturated hues in the face proper and the muted blue, blue, blue gray of the background. Now, this is a very tightly representational, tightly drawn, tightly executed still life. And yet, let me tell you why it stayed in my head. The blue, the orange, the white, the gray of the background firewood, the extremely beautiful rendering of the sunglasses, all depicting the day at the beach that this artist wished to convey. Still lifes are tough. Uh, this, there's, there should be a story with a still life. Otherwise, we're just looking at the excellent execution of something. So when we put together a still, still life subject, unless you're doing a study, as I do often with my daily paintings, you, you are going to have to bring more to the table than just painting something nice. And this artist did that. When you do architectural renderings, this one made the cut because A, it's tough to do a really good tight architectural rending, rendering unless you have background training in depicting architecture. But uh, this one also caught my eye because of the way the artist handled the vegetation on all three sides of this image. Uh, it's a portrait of a building and the building has stature and the angle and the slight exaggeration of the upward pull of that central column really makes this building feel important. And the artist was very successful in conveying that to the viewer. Now we move on to more pieces that made the cut. Notice that there's no consistency of subject or style and that's because design crosses across all aspects of art. This is another tightly rendered, beautifully done still life. I'd like for you to take note of the reflection in the copper. That's something that artists really need to master. What they see what is what needs to be painted when you're doing a tightly realistic still life. Again, subject matter, the intense saturation of the orange against its complement, the blue, was just a very nice touch. Ah, this one stopped me dead in my tracks. A, because it looks a lot like the Japanese uh, brush paintings, and yet the artist handled the um, concept of aerial of perspective extremely well without desaturating the colors as they marched off into the distance. Um, one of the things I really liked about this was this semicircle of sky and the pattern created by that semicircle of sky, you almost notice the koi as an afterthought, which is interesting because the pattern of this painting is so powerful that the eye just wants to spend time with the repetition with variety that this one manifests so beautifully in its design. Now, remember I said about one point perspective and, and sending people off on a path in the forest? Well, this artist did that, but look at the difference. If you'll notice the left-hand trees, they're all done with low contrast. The right-hand trees done with high contrast. The bushes on the right-hand side, the sticks also looking as if they would impale anybody who went near them. We have a small child with a dog. Again, another storyline for us to enjoy. And the fact that there's a yellow line going down this road means that perhaps there's danger on the other side of that hill. Suppose there's an oncoming car. There's a lot going on in this painting besides just a path in the woods. And it made the cut for that reason, for it has a storyline that the viewer will bring their own experiences to in order to enjoy the composition as well. And speaking of composition, when we paint covered bridges, most of the time we're way too close to them. When we take pictures too close to them, this artist put that covered bridge icon into a landscape and it made the cut because when you think of, of subject matter, sometimes the subject matter overwhelms the picture and we forget all about composition. And in this case, the artist was thinking 
really good composition on this one because we meander through the puddle on the right, through the onto the road path that takes us up to the bridge itself. And if you'll notice, the artist was handling all of these design elements in the tree branches, forcing us to go to that focal point, which is right here, not dead center either. It's off center, which is another design element. You don't want your focal points dead center in your picture. That can be a real problem. Now, anime and manga are things that I have found in my college classes because students bring those to the table. So when I first looked at this one, I was seeing it through a designer's eye, not for subject matter. I noticed it's a face, of course, but it took a minute. And the reason it took a minute is because the design of this rectangular space is so powerful that I had to spend my time first looking at the lovely variation of blue in the background, the incredible textural pattern of the color marks and the use of variants of color and also the orange accent here plus the accents of the outlined hair. This is just an outstanding design piece. And I would have given him an A, her A, whoever it is, an A in my design class for having used broken up the space in the rectangular composition in such a very overwhelmingly successful way. The next painting does essentially the same thing. It breaks up the rectangular space in such an interesting variety of repetition with that variety, variation of color, variation of line, variation of shape, and there are no truly saturated, full, intense colors in this piece, which makes it easy on the eye to look at over time. I really enjoyed seeing this piece come across the, the, the playing field, if you will, and it definitely made the cut. As we move into the last couple of pieces, I'm going to focus again on design. When you have a rectangular or circular or, or square space that you have to work with in order to create something, it's always good to look at how you divide up the space. Note that the horizon line is way up here on this painting. And if you looked at the other ones earlier, you'd see that most of the people didn't put a central horizon line in their viewpoint. Notice how the vertical calligraphic lines break up the large masses of the space that's in our, our viewpoint here. Our viewer's eye comes in several ways to get into this painting, and we're brought back into the painting by the dark shapes that turn around and go off to the right and disappear gently into the distance. This one definitely made the cut on design. As did this last piece, which I wish to emphasize by also saying that the use of the textural marks, the actual heaviness of the impasto passages of paint here, are worthy of merit. I love this one because when I came into the painting, I was spent a lot of time wandering around. I sailed across the top edge of this wave. I flowed downward and came and returned back across the composition here. And I was stopped by the lowering value on the right side. And I come through the focal point, this incredible impasto passage of paint that really feels and looks like the foam that would be there in this image. And then I dropped precipitously off these edges, or I sailed gently around over here to come back into this part, part of the painting as well. One of the criteria for evaluating a painting, especially your own work, is to take it and divide it into fourths, and then isolate each one of the, the quadrants of your work and see if they hold up in design and in interest. And it's one of the great ways of reevaluating re how you work on your art. And all of these paintings made the cut for all of the reasons that I said. And I'm, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. You can reply in the comments below. And in the comments below, I'll put more information about uh, my websites and who I am, et cetera. So you can also see it. And there'll be a link as well to the second video for the large category called Alternative for this art show. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>